Hi, and welcome to the Assemblance Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. In today's episode, we're going to deviate from our current series on the Apple II emulator and take a look at some Apple II hardware that I've gotten over the past few months. Two of these are from Big Mess of Wires, and the first one is the Disk Knocker, which lets you simulate the noises of an Apple II disk drive when you're using it with something like the floppy emu. The next one is the Yellowstone Universal Disk Controller card, also from Big Mess of Wires. And then the last card that we'll look at is the 4 megabyte NV RAM card from Raleigh Palavev. So let's get started. Here's the three products that I want to show today. These first two are from Big Mess of Wires. This one down at the bottom is the Noisy Disc Mechanical Sounder. And what this is, is just a simple electrical relay that goes between a floppy disk emulator, such as the Floppy Emu or the W Drive, and your Disk 2 card in your Apple II. And all it does is it just flips the electrical relay every time it gets a signal from the Disk 2 controller card to switch from one track to the next track, it goes ahead and toggles that, and it just makes this nice clicking noise, and we'll see that in a minute. The second item from Big Mess of Wires is the Yellowstone Universal Disk Controller Card, and this just came out a couple months ago, and it's amazing. It looks like an Apple Disk 2 interface card, it has two 20-pin connectors for regular Disk 2 drives, but it also serves as a universal disk controller card. So you can use the optional DB19 to DB20 connector to plug in disk drives that use a DB19 connector. You can also plug in 3.5 inch drives. You can plug in hard drives, and this will actually emulate a Lyron card. So it'll work with pretty much any Apple II or older Macintosh disk drive. And I'll show this in a minute too. If you're using it with the Floppy Emu, then it can actually serve as a Lyron card. And this will allow you to boot smart port drives. So for example, a 32 megabyte HDV file on an Apple IIe, which doesn't normally have smart port support. And then finally, the last item I want to show is the four megabyte NV RAM card from Raleigh Palavev. And this is a new design. He's actually been working on a variation of this card since the mid 1990s, but he's sort of perfected the design now where it can actually do both read and write of these NV RAMs while it's actually in the machine. And so this can actually serve as essentially a super fast booting RAM card where it remembers the data that's actually on it. So we'll see this in a minute as well. But first, let's go ahead and try out the noisy disk sounder. And I'll just go ahead and I'll plug my floppy emu using the Yellowstone into the noisy disk sounder. And then we'll just go ahead and boot up a floppy disk image. Normally, when you're using one of these floppy disk emulator devices like the floppy emu or the W drive, you simply plug it directly into your disk 2 controller card like this. And that's all there is to it. With the disk 2 sounder, all you need to do is just put that disc two sounder in between the two. So I'll take my cable from the Yellowstone controller card, plug it in to the in port on the disc two sounder, and then I'll plug my floppy emu into the out port on the sounder. And then I'll go ahead and I'll put my Yellowstone card into the Apple IIe and turn it on. All right, we've got everything wired up. I'll go ahead and turn on the Apple IIe. And so you can see it booted up Merlin 2.48. And as it was booting, every time it changed tracks on the disc, it would flip the relay inside the mechanical sounder here. And one nice thing is it doesn't actually slow down 
the floppy disk emulator at all. It's just responding to the track settings. So because I'm emulating a floppy disk, it actually really does take that long to boot up. Now, the fun thing is because this is just using the regular signals from the disk two controller card, this will actually work with any floppy disk emulator. So let's go ahead and try it with the W drive now. All right, now we have the W drive wired into the noisy disk sounder. Let's go ahead and turn the computer on. Okay, here it's booting up Castle Wolfenstein. And so you can see that works just as well as the floppy emu. The noisy disk sounder is $18 from Big Mess of Wires. And if you're nostalgic for that old disc two noise and you have either a floppy emu or a W drive or another type of disc emulator, then I'd highly recommend getting one of these noisy disc sounders. It's just a nice touch and just brings back that nostalgic feel. We already saw how the Yellowstone Universal Disc Controller card can be used with the Floppy Emu and the W drive in regular 5.25 inch mode. You can also use it with just regular floppy disk drives as well. And then finally, you can use it as a smart port hard drive card, like a Wiron card. So let's see that now. Okay, I've got the floppy emu plugged into the Yellowstone card. And let's turn the computer on. And if you recall, this was currently in regular 5.25 inch mode, but instead we're going to switch it to smart port mode. So I'll hit the reset button and then I'll hit the config button there. And then I'll scroll down to smart port hard disk, select that, it tells me to turn off the computer and I'll turn it back on. And now you can see that it's actually immediately booted into the Smart Zero Smart Port hard drive image, which turns out to be my hard drive image where I store all of my programs and games. With the Yellowstone Universal Disk Interface card and something like the Flappy Emu, you can actually boot up hard drive images on a regular Apple IIe without having to buy an extremely expensive Lyron card or get something like a CFFA 3000. Now, one thing which was a little unfortunate is I tried the same thing with the W drive from MFA2 Workshop. And while this works properly with the Yellowstone for regular floppy disk images, I couldn't get it to actually boot up hard drive images. So there's some subtle incompatibility with the W drive firmware where it doesn't like to talk to the Yellowstone in smart port mode. And I've been in contact with MFA2 Workshop and they're gonna take a look at that and see if there's something they can do to fix that. All right, the last item I wanna show is this four megabyte NVRAM card from Raleigh Palovev. And this card lets you boot up the Apple II almost instantly into a RAM card. And as I mentioned earlier, Raleigh's been working on this for a long time, and he's finally got it to the point where it now has four megabytes of RAM, and it's actually readable and writable. So let's go ahead and put this card in and see what it does. I can put it in any slot that I want, and if I put it in a slot that's higher than my disk card, then it'll go ahead and boot this card first. So here, since I don't have any other cards, I just put it in slot six. So I'll turn on the computer and you can see that it virtually instantaneously jumped into ProDOS. And you can see I have my selection here of all of the images that are on this RAM card. So there's lots of games, which I could fire up if I wanted to. So let's say, for example, here's Apple Panic. And you can see that it starts virtually instantly because this is essentially just a RAM card. So there's no real loading from a disk or anything like that. They're just immediately available. So let's reboot again. Let's see what else is in here. We have more games. And because it's readable and writable, these games, if you, they have say high score counters, for example, it'll actually save that high score to disk now. 
but you can do a lot more than that. So there's all sorts of utilities on this. The cool thing is this is just a four megabyte image. So you could actually completely erase this and put whatever programs you wanted on here and it would just boot instantly to whatever that is. So let's take a look now at how you actually upgrade the firmware on this and get new images onto it. I have a booty card here in slot seven, so that's now higher than the NVRAM card. And so you can see it actually booted the booty card first. And I've loaded the NVRAM HDV file into slot one on the booty card. So let's go ahead and we'll just boot that. And once that starts up, I'm now presented with a menu of options. The first thing I'm gonna do is make sure that my firmware is up to date. So I'm just gonna choose number four here, firmware upgrade. And it says this will install the NVRAM driver, data will be preserved. So it's asking me now what slot the NVRAM is in. So it's in slot six and I'll say, yes, I'm ready. Okay, and so that took care of that. Let's go ahead and we'll just reboot now to get back to the main menu here for the tools. And now we can actually back up everything that's on the NVRAM. And so this will actually create a backup copy of all the data on the NVRAM card, or we can restore from a backup image. All right, we've already seen how with the NVRAM utility, you can update the firmware, you can copy the existing memory on the RAM card. You can also restore an image to the RAM card, but probably the easiest way to get images or files on and off the RAM card itself is just to use a simple copy program. So here I've swapped the order of the two cards. So now the NVRAM's in slot seven, booty card is in slot five, and I've turned on the machine to start up the RAM card in the ProDOS utils directory. There's just a copy of copy two plus. And so if I wanted to, I can just copy files, say from my booty card over to the RAM card. I could just copy, for example, say my startup script here, and then go ahead and copy it over to the NVRAM. All right, so that finished. And if I turn the computer off, turn it back on, starts up right away. And you can see here's my startup program that I copied over. So this is probably the easiest way. So there are a few limitations to the NVRAM. Uh, I had a couple of disk images when I was trying to copy an entire directory of files that I couldn't get to work properly. If you're interested in one of these cards, Raleigh has said that he's potentially interested in producing them. And I would just contact him over on the Apple II enthusiast group over on Facebook. And I'm not sure what the actual price will be for these. He's hoping to do a more modern version and reduce the chip count, and that'll presumably reduce the cost as well. But overall, it's a really cool idea, super cool card, um, blazing fast booting, just a couple quirks that he needs to work out probably with the firmware. But other than that, it's really cool. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this tour of these three new products that are available for your Apple II. The first two from Big Mess of Wires, the Disc Knocker and the Yellowstone card, are available for purchase on his website, and I'll have a link to that in the show notes. The 4 megabyte NVRAM card is really more of a prototype right now, although Raleigh says that he's hoping to manufacture them for purchase. You can go ahead and look on the Facebook Apple II Enthusiast group for more information about that card, and I'll have a link in the show notes to that as well. If you're not currently a subscriber to my YouTube channel, I'd really appreciate it if you'd hit the subscribe button down below. I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support me that way, and I'll have a link in the show notes for that. Finally, I'm also involved with the 6502 Workshop Patreon. By supporting that Patreon, that'll let Mark Lemmert and the 6502 Workshop team create even more cool Apple II games like Nox Arceus. I'll have a link in the show notes for where you can sign up to be a patron of that as well. Once again, thanks for watching.
right, we've got the W drive wired in to the noisy disk. Okay, we've got the W drive wired. Damn it all. Okay, we've got the W drive wired in. Uh, stop. Okay, we've got the W drive wired into the disk sounder. Okay, we've got the W drive wired into the noisy disk sounder here. Let's go ahead and turn it on. 